everyone that's here tonight and those that are still on the way, those that are watching us on Facebook and uh, YouTube, thank you that you're watching. We welcome you. We've come today to worship the Lord. The word says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Inhabit means to dwell. So let's come and dwell in his presence. If we seek him, he will manifest himself. If we call on him, he will manifest himself. So let's begin to worship him. Let's join in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just come before you, Lord God, thanking you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you for the traveling mercies for everyone that's here. Father, that you will guide everyone that is still on their way, Lord God. I ask you that you bless the homes that are watching, Father, via internet, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I ask that you touch everyone that is here, Father God, whatever they came with, Lord God, they will leave it off, Lord God, for they've come, Father, for you to do something new in them, Father, to give them a revelation, Father, to heal them, Father God, to show them, direct them in the, in the way that they should go. Father, we ask you, Lord God, to forgive them, Lord God, for anything that they have done today that it might have offended you, Lord God. Father, show them that you are real, Father God. Speak to them through your word, Lord God. As the message comes forth, Lord God, let it penetrate. Let it not fall on thorns and thistles, Lord God. Let it not fall on rocky uh, ground, Lord God, but on healthy ground, Lord God. Yeah. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you will, Lord God, minister to each and every one, Father God. <coughs> Fill them, Lord God. Let them come, Lord God. Let them want to sit at your feet, Father, and feel your breath, Lord God. Let them hunger for you, Lord God, for you are almighty. Let them remember, Lord God, everything wonderful that you have done for them, Lord God, where you've brought them to, Lord God. Father, we bless the man that you have anointed to be the shepherd of this house, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you've done to him, Lord God, and you continue to do. We thank you for his wife, Father God, and her, her diligence to watch over and care for him, Father God. We ask that you bless their home, Father, saturated with your peace, with your love, Father, with your Holy Spirit, Father, that you continue to watch them as they come and go, Father God. Father, we just ask right now, Father God, come. We know you're here, Lord God. We just want you to manifest yourself, Lord. Make yourself real to those that have never seen or felt you before, Lord God. So, Father, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for you are almighty God. I thank you that you are peace. I thank you that you are Savior. I thank you that you are our joy, Lord God. I thank you that you are redeemer. You are a healer. You are our provider. You are our strong tower, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you called us into your kingdom to be your children, Lord, that we are light and salt, Lord God. We thank you that we are citizens of heaven, Lord God. We thank you that you have redeemed us, Lord God. We thank you for everything, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen.
holy name. I will praise your holy name. I will adore you. I will adore you, Lord. I will adore you, Lord. I will praise your holy name. I will adore. I will adore you, Lord. I will adore you. I will praise. I will praise your holy name. No music, just the voices say, I will adore you.
Thank you, Jesus. Awesome is our Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. all that came out tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand for our brothers and sisters that came out. You're in for a special treat tonight as the word goes forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to have Brother Fred come up and he's going to share something. Good evening, everyone. Uh, right now is our time uh, for tithe and offering. We're going to receive our tithe and offering. Yes, thank you. Here at Turning Point, uh, Turning Point Fellowship, this is also a part, uh, important part of worship for everyone here. You know, um, it truly uh, helps us recognize our and, and humble our hearts onto the Lord. You know. And uh, we just want to um, remember, you know, where our heart's at um, when we offer, when we tithe to the house of God. Um, sister, can you put up uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 12, please? Whatever you give is acceptable. If you give it eagerly and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. When I was reading this um, this afternoon, I went from you know the beginning of the chapter to the to the bottom of it, and um, what the Lord was um, talking to me was saying, it's not about it's about it's not about how much you give. It's about the heart of the giver, you know, and and the Lord loves a cheerful and freely giver. So um, when today when we give, just um, search your heart, you know, think about, you know, others, people that need help. You know, right now it's Christmas time, you know, and people need help out there. So let's think about that. Um, we have a, a number uh, to uh, use. It's called uh, Share Faith. It is uh, the kids. Can you help me out? It's 714 477 Seven seven three six. Again, seven one four four seven 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 three six. This is just in case if you um, don't have no cash or or a check. And like Pastor Angel loves to say this, I, I when I first came, he, he I would hear him say this. It's give a little, save a little, spend a little. So let's do that. All right. Thank you.
children, in the 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 is yours, Lord. Yes. So we thank you, Father God, for these tithes and offerings, yes. Father God. They came to your house, Father God, and the pastor will have the wisdom, the knowledge to, to do what he got to do with this money, Lord. We thank you for the people that give and for the people that didn't give, Father God. You know their hearts, Father God. You know where they stand at, Father God. So we thank you, Lord, for this day, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Hugo. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. We're going to have a, can you please have a seat? We're going to have our announcements right now. Thank you, team. We're going to dismiss you now. <laughs> All right. Give it up for the worship team, please. Yes. The kids, should I let them go or no? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, before we start um, the announcements, I just want to give this announce announcement on Sundays uh, before service at a, um, 940 to 955. We have prayer in here. You are all welcome to come in and pray for Pastor Angel, for one another, get ready for the service. We come into the sanctuary and get ready. So please Come and join us. Come and join in one accord as we come together and uh, give God the glory. Amen. Amen. All right. So we have some announcements. I believe this Saturday is the women's meeting. Yes, at 10 a.m. Let's give us a clap. <laughs> Praise God. Sister Bobby will be the speaker this weekend. So make sure that you invite a friend, a cousin, an aunt, an uncle. Uh, an uncle, <laughs> excuse me, uh, a, a friend, an uncle, co-worker, just bring them. Come in and have fun and enjoy the word of God. Uh, also, we have um, a special Christmas celebration service Sunday, December 18th. 
The children will be uh, performing, and we will have refreshments after the service. So come out. Come and uh, join us that day. Also, I believe we have service on Christmas Day at 9 a.m. New time. So let's not forget, at 9 a.m., we're going to have service on Christmas Day here, okay? So um, right now, we're going to dismiss the children. Thank you. All right, let's give them a clap. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Our speaker for tonight is, uh, wow, man, this... This young man is, he's a lover of, the, of Christ. He, he, um, he really imparts into my life. We talk a lot on the phone during the day. And uh, it's, he's a beautiful man. He loves Christ. So I'd like to invite up right now, Tomas Cordero. Thank you, brother. together amen <laughs> no i hope i don't get uh you may be seated please please we stand in the presence of the lord amen but i receive that um so let me fix this thank you father hallelujah we want to welcome facebook youtube and all those watching hello pastor angel we love you i want to thank you for this opportunity to speak in the house of the lord before my brothers and sisters because that's all it is that i'm doing I'm not preaching, you know, I'm not doing none of that. But what I'm going to do is just impart what the Lord imparted in me. Um, you know, about three or four weeks ago when I was praying and I was in my, uh, you know, I'm spending my time with the Lord. The Lord says, I want you to speak on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the next time you're able to speak. I said, okay, Father, got you. I didn't begin to prepare, right? You know, knucklehead, hardhead, I didn't begin to prepare, so... Two weeks after the Lord has given me that, I receive a text message. Thomas, you know, you're scheduled to speak on the 8th, Thursday night. I said, okay, I already got what I'm going to speak on. So I began to speak. I began to read 1 Corinthians, the whole chapter. And there's just so much in that chapter. I, I was just, I dug deep, family. I dug deep. And um, the Lord set me up. You know, I shared that with the brother. The Lord had set me up because in my reading, you know, the Lord... He dealt with me in regards to love, you know, in love. And uh, I hope tonight I'm able to share what the Lord has shared with me in my quiet time, in my prayer closet. I pray that um, you'll be able to glean a little bit off that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity tonight, Father God, to come before you, Father, for... Uh, I'm sharing this before an audience of one, Father, and that is you, Father, that I may be well-pleasing to you. I thank you for all my brothers and sisters that are here this evening, Father God. I pray that when I speak, Father, it's your words coming from my lips, Father, and I pray that uh, the hearts of your children are, are circumcised, Father. I pray that their ears are open, Father, attentive to the Spirit of God, Father, that they would catch what it is you're trying to say, Father God. So we just thank you for this opportunity to come together, Father, as one body to seek you, Father. And we just thank you and we praise you. And the church and I said, amen and amen. You can clap. So, like I said, the Lord would have me speak this evening out of 1 Corinthians, amen, uh, chapter 13. But before we get there, I, I'm the type that when I study, I like to know the who, the what, the why, the where. I, I want to I wanna put it together in context because I can just pull anything out and make up a story. But we need to know what it is Paul's trying to say to the Corinthians and why he's saying it, amen? So here we go. Paul wrote the first letter. To the Corinthians while in Ephesus around 56, 57 AD. Amen. He planted the church and a few years later after he had planted the Corinthian church, he was receiving reports about them, disturbing reports about the Corinthians. Amen. That they were struggling with uh, pagan practices, that they were full of pride and, ex and even excusing sexual immorality within the church. Amen. 
The Corinthians were also plagued with division. That was a big thing with the Corinthians. They were just divided. Amen. So Paul here, he writes this letter. They were what they were doing was they were dividing themselves into groups based off spiritual leaders. Because at that time you you had uh, Paul, you had Apollos and you had Cephas, which is Peter. Amen. So these men in the church were dividing themselves up into groups. Amen. Of certain leaders. And out of all the issues that plagued the Corinthian church, Paul chose to uh, address the issue of division first. Amen. And he he addresses that in chapter one, uh, verse 10 through 13. Can we go there, please? And like I said, I just want to go. We're going to go through these scriptures. It's going to be a few scriptures before we get to the love book, the love chapter. Amen. We need to know why Paul is, is addressing them. About love. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, Paul says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Paul, for it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. Amen. My brothers. So what I mean to say is that each one of you says, I follow Paul or I follow Apollos or I follow Cephas, which is Peter. I, I follow Christ. And Paul is saying, is Christ divided? Right. Was was Paul crucified for you? Was Brother Ryan? Cru- so let's put it into where we can understand. So was Brother Ryan crucified you uh, uh, crucified for you? Was Pastor Angel crucified for you? Was Pastor Eric? No. This is what Paul's trying to explain to them. He's all, we weren't crucified you for you. Christ is not divided. Excuse me, I'm getting a little excited here. Is Christ divided, right? In, chapter, in verse 13, he says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? He's trying to get through to them saying, these are mere men. They did not die for you. You did not get baptized in the name of Pastor Eric. Amen. You got past, you got baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that's what Paul's saying. He's just trying to explain to them that Christ is not divided. There's no need to uh, attach themselves to the, attach themselves to these these men in that manner. Let me know if I'm doing all right, okay, guys? Please, because <laughs> so we see. Okay, let's go on to chapter uh, three. Amen. Let's go on to chapter three. Uh, verses 1 through 6, because Paul continues. He continues to speak to them regarding this issue of division and them uh, lifting, up, lifting men up. Amen? Essentially uh, trying to uh, uh, idolize men, uh, if I could say that. So in chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, Paul says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants, because their behavior, he, he can't under, he's like, dude, their behavior is, what, what are you guys doing? You guys are like babies. Amen. He says, I address you as, as uh, I could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. He says, I feed you milk. Uh, verse two, I feed you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready. Verse 3, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh? And behaving only in a, in a human way, he's saying, you're, we're going to put it in the way we can understand. He's saying, you're arguing with one another. You're sitting in the back there and you're arguing with one another about certain issues. He's like, and you, you claim to be spiritual? Your behavior is saying otherwise. He's all, you're acting like babies in Christ. You're acting like babies in the spirit, he's saying. He's also, I have to address you in this way. Verse 4. For when one says, he's all, your jealousy and your strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? Verse 5, he says, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Uh, Apollos, he says, what is Paul? Servants through whom you believed. Pastor Eric is a servant in whom helps you to believe. So Paul is just trying to explain to them all, all they are is servants. There's no need to lift them up because if you look at uh, chapter uh, verse 6, let's go to verse 6, please. 
Verse 6, he says, I planted, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but it's God who gives the growth. You see, so Pastor Angel, he might have, he might have planted, Brother Eric might, uh, Ryan might have watered, but it's God who gives the increase in the growth in your life. You see, it's the Spirit of God that gives the, gro that gives the growth. It's the Word of God. Amen. So in chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 6, Paul tells them how unspiritual they're behaving and how the men that they're fighting about are only human servants to Christ. Amen. So from the beginning of the letter, Paul has to bring order. He didn't bring, he didn't bring up any, other, any of other, those other issues, the pride, the sexual immorality. We'll get to that, those things. He brought up the order, the division in the house. Amen. Can we, I, I want to I stress this thing about division and how when we are divided and how when we, um, when we bicker, when we are jealous of one another. And, and he's talking to Christians. He's not talking to the world. He's, talk, he's addressing the Corinthians. He is addressing a church. I want, you, I, I want to stress this right here. And can we go to the message, amen? Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4 in the message. Because the way he puts it, like, if Pastor Angel, Pastor Eric, myself, right, any of these men of God come up here and would share this with you, you'd probably leave the church. Amen. But it needs to be done. We, we need to understand how ignorant it is to, to, uh, to fight with one another. Amen? Amen. So in the message, he says, but for right now, friends, I am completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealings with each other and with God. You're acting like infants in relation to Christ, capable of nothing, nothing much more than nursing at the breast. Well, then I'll nurse you since you don't seem capable of anything more. See, we get upset at Pastor Angel, right? When he's, he's patting us on the back, like burping us and all that. But why does he always say the same thing? Why is he always preaching the same thing? Because we're infants, so he has to. Feed us at the breast. That's what it's saying. Capable of nothing much, nothing much more than nursing at the breast. He says, well, then I'll nurse you since you don't seem capable of anything more. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good, right? We hear a word and it's like, oh, that word makes me feel good. So I'm going to take that. But the correction, the, the word that's going to sharpen you, no, I'm not going to take that. You see, that's the breast milk. The words that, that make you feel good, that's, that's what he's saying. That's the breast milk, right? And it's the tough word, the, the words of correction, that's what we, we tend not to grab onto. That, so that's what he's saying. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good or for what makes you look important, are you really much different than a babe at the breast? Content only when everything's going your way. When one of you says, I am Paul's, I'm on Paul's side, and the other says, I am for Apollos. Aren't you being totally childish? He's talking about division. That's what he's talking about there. And, and I, that message, it just, it, it like, uh, gets, give, it gave it to me on the chin. So I was like, I had to share that. So Paul is talking to him about that, uh, about, you know, the... Um, Apollos, Cephas, and that he's talking about then. So from the beginning of the letter, Paul has to bring order to the church. And he, he, he leaves the other issues to the side for now. Amen. And uh, let's go to chapter 4. And like I said, this is just basically trying to get us to chapter 13 where I really want to come. But I want you guys to understand what's going on. So chapter 4. Paul continues to correct them in chapter 4. Chapter, uh, let's go to chapter 4, verse 17, please. He continues to correct them. And what does he say? He says, that is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of the ways of Christ. They have forgotten the way of Christ. You see, back in the Corinthians, what the Corinthians were doing, they were adopting pagan practices. They were adopting the things of the world, and they were bringing them into the church and allowing that to go on. I hope that's not going on here at Turning Point Fellowship, amen? And if it is, we need to cut it out. We need to call it out, amen, and rebuke it out in the name of Jesus. So, in chapter 17, he tells them, he's, I'm sending you Timothy to remind you and show you how to live, 
he tells them, let's go to verse 21. He tells them, what do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love in the spirit of gentleness? And what is he doing? See, he got the report and he's saying, and what the report said from Chloe's people is they're, they're practicing pagan practices. They're, they're fornicating. They're allowing uh, immoral acts, uh, immoral relationships. They're full of pride. They're full of division. So Paul could have right off from the jump said, you know what? All of you are doing wrong. He could have condemned them all, but no, he didn't. What he did was he started in verse 1 to bring them back together, bring them back under the umbrella of the Almighty, Jesus Christ, and try to line them back up to the teachings of Christ. Amen. So I like how he says that. He says, what do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod or with love and the spirit of gentleness? And that's exactly what he is doing in this letter. He's coming to him in love. In chapter 5, we see verses 1, 1 through 2, many in the church were approving of immoral relationships. I don't, you guys might be familiar with that immoral relationship. It was a man sleeping with his father's wife. And Paul says in uh, verses 1 and 2, what does he say? He says, not even the non-believers do this. Not even pagans allow this amongst themselves. You're doing things in the body, in the church, that not even non-believers do out in the world. And he's he's checking them right here. He says, not even non-believers do this. So in verse 13, he tells them, what does he tell them? Let's go to verse 13. God judges those outside. Because they were practicing the things that were out there. They're practicing them in here. They were allowing things that don't even go on out in the world into the church. He said, God is going to judge them. But for you, the church, he planted the church. He is the under shepherd of the church. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the judge of you guys in the sense of I'm going to call these things out. Not in the judge of condemnation and hell or heaven. No, he's saying, I'm going to judge you now. He says, purge the evil person from among you. Remove the wicked man from among you. See, and that's what we have to do in the body of Christ. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be. But if you are a believer of Christ filled with the Holy Ghost and you see something like that, you call it out. Amen. And that's what Paul's doing. He's calling it out. Thank you, Pastor. So many in the church were approving of immoral uh, relationships. And Paul tells them, he's all, not even non-believers do that. And you call yourselves Christians and you're allowing that. Right. So the church members in in verse in uh, chapter six, verses three through eight, were even suing one another. The church members of Corinthians were suing each other. And Paul tells them, yes, and they're brothers in the Lord. Right. And they're suing one another. They couldn't settle their own differences amongst themselves. Right. Or even the Bible says, call an elder, call another person to try to. They couldn't even do that. So what they wanted to do, what they were doing was getting their issues that were about the church. Right. And taking them to non-believers, a non-believing judge, a worldly judge and trying to have a worldly judge judge over them. And Paul tells them, Paul tells them in in, uh, verses three through eight, he says it would be better to be taken advantage of than to take your Christian brother to court and damage your Christian testimony. We have an audience, family. We have an audience. And that audience, first, is your children. And after that, it's the world. So if we're sitting here bickering with one another and I'm taking... Sutano and Fulano to court over something petty over five dollars and we both look like fools to the, our children and to the world. But we claim to be Christians and we're to lay down our lives for one another. So that's what Paul's trying to tell him. He's like, dude, you guys are suing each other. You guys are allowing immoral acts and all these things are going on. He says it's better for you to take the L. Let's put it in today's language. Take the L, right? Go about your business so that you could save your testimony. Amen. Because they're watching. They're watching, family. They're watching. Paul also tells them to flee uh, from sexual immorality. Amen. Because what was happening, what was happening is that they were walking. We're all free. We're free in Christ Jesus. But they were using their freedom to go out to the side And be a sipping saint or what it was, was involving themselves in sexual immorality. That's what they were doing. 
And he tells them, yeah, you're free in Christ. You've been given liberty, liberty, but that liberty is not for you to go and do whatever you want. It's not for that. Amen. So he's correcting them. He's Paul's correcting them. He's correcting them. And there's so much going on. And Paul in love addresses every issue and corrects them, pointing them back to the way of Christ. Amen. So that's just like a little foundation of what's going on in the in the Corinthian church and why Paul was had to write this letter to them. In, in, in the, um, I, I think it's the seventh chapter, I'm not sure, but the Corinthians end up sending a letter to Paul asking him questions regarding spiritual gifts. So in chapter 12, Paul addresses the spiritual gifts. Paul addresses the spiritual, uh, reg- the Corinthians had questions regarding spiritual gifts. So Paul describes what spiritual gifts are, who receives them, and what they are for. Can we go to, thank you, sister, come on. Yeah, she's on it. So what are, what are gifts of the Spirit for, guys? To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for what? The common good. There's the motive and the goal. Right there. The motive and the goal. So what, spiritual, what God has given us, the body of Christ, spiritual gifts for, whether it's prophet, apostle, tongues, words of knowledge, whatever it is you could think of, it's... For the edification of the body. That's what it is right there. For the common good. For the edification of the body. Amen. So that's what Paul is saying. He makes a a point because they're asking him questions. It's like, hey, this guy speaks in tongues. This guy does this. Has this spiritual gift. And they're thinking one spiritual gift is greater than the other. Or that that makes me more superior uh, because I'm a prophet or I'm this. I'm more superior than you. It's not so. It is not so. So Paul is addressing this. So Paul makes it a point to tell them a a particular gift doesn't make a believer spiritual. Every believer is spiritual because God's spirit lives in you. So therefore, you are spiritual because you have the spirit of God in you. Now, I put in parentheses or quotations. I don't know the difference, but I put in these things. It's up to you to operate in it. If you choose to operate in it, then you're going to be flowing and going. But if you don't, then that spirit is going to lay dormant in you. And you're going to be of no use to the kingdom. So that's what he's trying to say. No spiritual gift is greater than the other because it's all been given to edify the body by Christ. Yes, that's what he says. He's all, all believers are spiritual because all believers have God's spirit. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you received his spirit. Amen. Amen. He, thank you. Thank you, sir. He goes on to use an analogy in, in chapter 12 of the body. In verse 12, he uses the analogy of the body because of their pride. The Corinthians were, were walking in, in spiritual pride, man. Straight up. They were walking in spiritual pride. And all members were needed. He's trying, for just as the body is one, has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are of one body, so it is with Christ. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. You see Pastor Eric, myself, Pastor Angel up here, Ryan, all the people that are able to speak, Brother Tone. You see them up here like, man, those guys are spiritual. And, you know, man, I wonder, is that the neck? Is that the head? Is that the hand or the arm? What part of the body is that guy? You know that sister that was up here that opened up, that, up, opened up the service? We might look at her as a toe. But that sister prays every day. You could hear if you were listening to her words when she was up here, she was speaking word and life. You might look at her, oh, that sister Olivia, she works in the nursery But brothers and sisters, that sister is praying on the daily for you, your family. She's praying and she's interceding. That's what she does. And that's a perfect example of the toe not being greater than the head. Because without praying sisters, praying brothers, we cannot do what we do up here. The spirit of God will not be moving in this house the way he does. So the toe is not less than the head. And the Bible says, and and Corinthians says, and if you think... The toe is lesser. We're to show them more honor, the Bible says. Right? We're to lower ourselves. Amen? And we're to give the lower, the lower member more honor, he says. Man. Thank you, Lord. Let me take a drink. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you. All right. So, family, one thing from this little portion I want you to get. We all have the spirit of the living God living inside of us, which is presence and power. And it's up to you to operate in it. It's up to you to exercise the spirit of God. And the more you the more you exercise it, which means the more you heed the spirit of God and you obey the bigger things he's going to give you. And it might just be to hug a brother. It might just be to, uh, you know, what, give someone a word. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. It gets bigger and bigger, but it's up to you to operate in it, family. So he goes on to use the analogy of the body, and that was perfect. When I was sitting back there, you know, Olivia is my grandmother, for those of you that don't know. I was like, thank you, Father. That's a perfect picture of, you know, someone's meek. Mom, she's in the, that's a perfect analogy of, of the members of the body. Amen. So in verse 31... After explain of, of chapter 12, after, after perfect, after explaining uh, spiritual gifts, he says, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. Because in the previous verses, he's talking about the order of the gifts, which is uh, apostle, pastor, teacher. And I don't know him correctly. Please don't throw stones or I don't know him. But, you know, he gives the order. Apostles, pastors, tongues, all these things. So he says, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. Now, some people might think, oh, man, I'm going to desire to be an apostle or a prophet. What he's talking about there in context, he's saying desire the higher gifts within the church as a whole. Why? Because what does it say in uh, what was it saying? I think it was uh, chapter seven, uh, chapter four, verse seven. It's to edify the body. So we want those gifts operating in Turning Point Fellowship. Let me tell you, we want the prophet, the apostle. We want all these things because what he says is it's gonna, that those gifts are to edify the body. So that's what he's saying there. Earnestly desire the higher gifts. And he says, but this, and I will show you still all those gifts you see, they, they're operating in, in, your, in your church, Corinthians, and all that. That's good. But I will still show you a more excellent way, he says. Amen. And I got 30 minutes left. So now let's go on into this way of love, family. That was just the, that was me trying to just stage it for you guys. Amen. I hope that's all right. So this book, this chapter, I should say, chapter 13, many call it the book of love. You know, um, yeah, poems were written about it. Songs are written about it. Bo- devotionals, books and all this. But A lot of times people take it out of context and this chapter, chapter 13, can stand alone. It could stand alone just by itself and you can read it and receive. But it's good to to put it in context. And the context is he's speaking of spiritual gifts in the in the body, in the church. Right. So he says, I will still show you a more excellent way. So let's go to chapter uh, no 13. Let's go to verse 13, please. Thank you, Father. He says, if I speak in tongues, now remember, he just got off of chapter 12 speaking about the spiritual, spiritual gifts. He says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. The point is, if we have the gift, but are not showing love or have love, You're just making noise. You're just making noise. That's like me getting up here with one of those things, Enrique Beats, symbols. Hey, guys, so today's message is clang, 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 clang. Okay, let us pray. Have a good night. That's what he's saying. Because there's no love behind it. But have not love, he's saying clang, 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 clang. You can do all this. You can talk a good one. But without love... You're just making noise. And he says in verse 2, And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Notice here what he says, If I have prophetic powers and I understand all Mysteries. He's putting that in there on purpose. And all knowledge. And if I have all faith, 
And if I and I have faith to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Then he goes, he takes it a step further, family. He says, even if I, in verse 3, even if I give all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. You know, when I was reading that, see, so let me, so look it, let me just stick to my notes and then I'll go. So tongues, prophetic powers, and knowledge, they all may be impressive when we see them up here in operation, right, in the manifestation they might all be impressive, but they are worthless if not used how God intended, out of love. It's not used for me to put on a show or to, to get you to feel good. It's not used for that. It's, used, it's, it's to be used in love, out of love. Because what we're doing is when someone gives you a prophetic word or someone lays hands on you or uh, things of that nature, what, he's do, what they're doing is they're just a conduit from the Father Goes to them, to you. And what, and what they're doing is they're expressing the love of God here, here, and here. Yeah. That's what that is. So he's saying if you don't have love and you're just going and, yes, thank you, Father. La, 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 la. I should have bought a Honda. It's for nothing. It's a show. It's for nothing. Because there's no power behind it because the love of God is not in it. The love of God is not in it. So if it's not used how God intended out of love for him and for others, what does he say? He, you gain nothing. So when we read, so when we read right here in, a chap, in verse 2, what does he say? No, in verse 3 he says, if I give away all I have, and if I, del- I, I, let's just stick there. He says, if I give away all I have. So I was driving in my work truck. I work for Ferguson and I drive a, a I don't know what size bed it is, Edgar, but I, we drive trucks. I'm driving, I'm listening to my praise and worship, you know, and it's just Lord's ministering to me. And I'm going over this in my head. And he says, if I give away all I have. So what, what, that, what he's talking about there is give everything to the poor. And when you think about that, who comes to mind? For me, the rich young ruler, right? Jesus, the rich young ruler. Jesus tells the rich young ruler, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, Father, you know, I've done all this, Rabbi. And da, da, da. He says, you're right, but you lack one thing. Sell all you have and follow me. What the Bible say? The rich young ruler went away sad because he had many riches. But the Lord showed me in context to this, bringing that from there over here is that this says, if I give all I have and have not love. What if the rich young ruler was, would to have said yes? Yes, Lord. He sold all he had. Just go see what this guy's about. Sells all he has, right? There was no love, but there was no love. His heart wouldn't, wouldn't have got changed. Because if he would have said, yes, Lord, I sell it all because he loved Jesus, a change would have took place. A change in his heart would have took place. And what happens when a change in our heart takes place, change in others take place. So what the Lord was showing me through that, through that scripture about the rich young ruler, ruler what if the rich young ruler would have said yes, but just out of, yeah, okay. And what he showed me then is, that's kind of how it is in the body of Christ, right? Amen. We come in, we come in, we get plugged in. Hey, can you work in this area? Yeah, sure. But there's no love there for it. Or you get put in a place to fill a gap. You're a gap filler. And you get put in a place to fill a gap. And you get stuck there. And now you're murmuring and you're complaining, like, man, why do I got to do this? What about brother so-and-so? They never show up. When they show up, when they, show up they don't do it right. Wah, 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 clanging cymbal, clanging cymbal. It's because their heart is not there. Yes, you might have love for the Father, but we're supposed to have love for him. Your gift of using that media back there, because I don't know how to use it, it's a gift. Your gift, right, you're supposed to do it in love for him and others and others. And what the Lord showed me through that time and my work, he said, that happens a lot. We fill a gap. We're lacking the love. We're lacking the love in what in in why we're doing it. We're supposed to be doing it out of love for the father and for the body. Amen. So if you give away all you have and if you deliver up your body, meaning you get martyred, you lay down your life. 
uh, for the Lord, but you have not love, you gain nothing. Amen. It's worthless. It's saying, well, why is it worthless? Why, you, you know, I mean, somebody tell you that everything you're doing is worthless. Wouldn't you be like, what? Question it? Wouldn't you question that? I would. Like, what are you talking about, bro? It's worthless because, like I said, tongues doesn't change lives. Prophetic powers doesn't change lives. You might get touched, but it, that's not going to change your life. It's the love, the supernatural love of Christ, of the Father, that's going to change your life. And that also changes the life of others, family. See, so this is what happens. Let me, let, let me break it down really quick. The love for the Father, and we're going to get into the, what type of love we're talking about here. The love of the Father was so great, he gave. What did he give? Who did he give? His only son. His only son came down. The Father gave his only son to come down. The love the Father had, the supernatural love the Father had, the Son had for the Father and for the creation. What did the Son do? He gave his life. So when we, that spirit, that love that we were talking about earlier is in us because we received them. So the love the father had for the son, uh, for the creation, he sends the son down. The son comes down and he has so much love for the father and so much love for the creation, he lays his life down. So when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that same spirit is within inside, is, is inside of us. So we are to lay our lives down for you, for you, for you, for you. This is what we're to do. And that's why Love is so important because that, that type of love remains. It ain't going nowhere. And you could see it. He's, she's here because of love. Man, that went quick. She's here because of love. He's here because of love. So it's that type of love that remains. Amen? Let's go to Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. This is the type of love we're talking about. Agape, agape love. I don't know if, can I get a show of hands of who knows what agape love is? Okay, my wife does. My wife is, pff, that woman loved me when I didn't love myself. And I used to ask her, why do you love me? Why do you, because I didn't even know why she loved me. But she did, and she does. And pff, I'm a better man today for that, because that woman showed me agape love. Amen? Let me just give a hand clap for my wife. I love you, honey. So, Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 5, he says, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great agape with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By the grace you have been saved. That's the type of love. It's an agape type of love. God loved us so much while we were sitting in our sin. You think of the worst thing you've ever done in your life. The worst thing. And think about that. God loved you right then. He didn't wait for you to get cleaned up. You see, that's, that's the problem with today's generation. They want a certain type of love. You think, oh, well, I love my cat. I love my dog. I love pizza. I love my wife. I love God. You, got, you love them all with the same type of love? No. This type of love is agape love. And, and what the, the type of love is, is we're going to show you right now. He, give, he gives us a layout in, in verses 4 through 8. Amen. So, God's love is in us. Amen. This type of love I'm talking about, family, is at my expense for your benefit. If you guys can catch that, catch that. Agape type of love is at your expense, even though you don't want to do it, you don't like it, and it hurts, for his benefit. Yeah. And vice versa. For those of you that are married in this house, that's the type of love. And especially husbands. We're to love our wives as Christ loved the church. So much so, he died for the church. He died to himself, to his ego, to the machismo, to all that stuff. He died. That's what we're to do, man. Amen? So, love is patient. Let's go to verse 4 of 13, please. <clears throat> I got 15 minutes, they said. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. You're good to me, Lord. Verse 4, please. Thank you, Lord. So the Bible says, verse 4, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It's not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant. See, love is gentle with others, family. 
Are you gentle? You're probably gentle with Brother Tony, Pastor Andre, but are you gentle with your, your children? Are you gentle with your wife? Because that's where it starts. He's talking to the church. He's not talking how you treat the world. He's talking how you treat the body, those that are his. So love is gentle with others. And see, this is where the Lord jacked me up. Because in the, the season I am in my life, in my spiritual walk, the Lord had to, I'm going to put it in layman terms, he had to lace me up with this. Because I'm going to need to operate in this. Amen. If I'm going to go further in his, in his kingdom business. Amen. So love is gentle with others. Love is not jealous of others. Love does not boast. First Corinthians 4, 7 really quick, please. And why doesn't love boast? He's talking about spiritual gifts. You're going to boast in all this and all that. First Corinthians 4, 7. For we see anything different in you. What do you have that you did not receive? If anything you received, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? So anything you have in terms of the gifts of the spirit and all these things, are you, it's been given to you. So who are you to boast about it? That's why love does not boast, because it's been given everything it has. Amen? You guys got that? So love doesn't boast, family. Any gift you have has been given to you by God. Amen? Verse 5, love is not rude. It does not insist on its own way, meaning it is not selfish. Love is not selfish. It puts others before itself. Man, that's hard. Man, that is hard. Putting Brother Ryan's feelings and what he wants over mine or Brother Ted's. That's hard. Or your husband's or your wife's. Amen. Love does not insist on its own way, family. It is not irritable or resentful. (laughs) Love puts others ahead of of self. It's hard to put others before yourself. Bible says love is not irritable, meaning not easily angered. It's not quick to be like, boy, didn't I tell you to go throw out the trash? (laughs) Come on, brother. You don't know this is how we do it here at Turning Point Fellowship? (laughs) Come on, get it together, bro. That's not love. That's not, that's you. That's flesh. That's flesh. Love does not keep, see, he says love is not irritable or resentful. Resentful meaning it doesn't keep a record of wrongs. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. That's what that means. Amen. Verse six, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, endures all things. Love believes all things. Love looks for the good rather than trying to find the bad. See, love believes all things and it hopes all things. Love sees the good in that person over there. Regardless of what's manifesting right now, it hopes for the best. It looks for the best. Why? Because that's what our Father in Heaven does. Because the Bible, we just read it, while we were yet in our sin, He didn't look to us when we were all cleaned up, polished up here, doing what I'm doing. No. Well, and that's how love operates. It looks at the person with the heart of Christ. That's how we're to look at one another. Not judging Not, oh, this person's missing it, this person. No, none of that. That's love. So love believes all things. Love's looking for the good rather than trying to find the bad. Love doesn't stop uh, hoping for the best in others. No matter what it looks like, love doesn't quit. It hopes all. It endures all. Endures, family. Endures. And and the best way I can put it is, you guys want to know, go talk to my wife, man. I have put that woman through some things, but she endured. That's love. You know, God has been so good to me because he allowed me to see agape love before I even knew what it was in my wife. Amen? I'm bragging about, bragging about my wife. Love doesn't quit. When the trials of life pile up, love keeps going, family. Love keeps going. And love... Love keeps going no matter what the circumstances, no matter what it sees. That's why he says 
It rejoices with truth, and it bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, and it endures all things. Love keeps going, family. Verse 8, love never ends. But as for prophecies, here we go, back to the gifts. And this, this, he's talking about gifts. Love never ends. As for prophecies, that's why love is so important. It never ends. It stays. And I, I want to keep on pressing this. Love changes lives. Family. Love changes lives. Amen. Let me see. Where am I at? Go to Romans 2, 4, please. For it's, it's the, what the Bible says, Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God, God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? See, it's the love of God that draws men to repentance. Amen. That's what we, we need to understand. That's why it's so vitally important that we walk in love, because we're image bearers of Christ. And God's love, right? We say God's love, then why aren't you walking in them? Thomas, why aren't you walking in them? That's why the Lord set me up with this, because this is all for this is all Thomas. He's talking to T right now. Then why ain't you walking in it? You can do all these things. You can behave all this way, all spiritual. But without love, you're doing nothing, T. So verse nine, let's go back. I mean, verse eight, let's go back to verse eight of chapter 13. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. Love will never end or fail. We may fail, but Christ's love will not. Amen. The agape type of love, I got five minutes. The agape type of love will always be effective. The agape kind of love, which is a self-sacrificing love, which is a die-to-yourself love, no matter what I want, how can I edify Brother Blake right here? How can I lift him up? What can I do to help him? It's not about Thomas. You see, we're so busy worrying about what we don't got, what we don't, what, what we're not getting, um, well, you know, all these things. We're focused on self. That's why you're depressed. That's why you're stressed out. That's why you're this. That's why you're that. But when you look to another and how can I help you? How can I edify you? It all changes. It all changes, family. So love will never, will never end or fail. We may fail, but Christ's love will not. Agape love will always be effective. That's why it's so important. That's why everything is noise, he said. You can give all you have away to the poor. Your body could be burned for the name of Jesus' sake, but without love, you're gaining nothing. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. And he's trying to tell you. So this is why the prophecies will pass away, because we're only doing it partially. We don't have all the answers. We don't have all the knowledge. God does. But what does he say in verse 10? He's all, but when perfect comes... The partial will pass away. Who's the perfect? Who's the perfect? Jesus. So when Jesus comes, all these things are going to pass away. But you know what will remain? Love. There is only one perfect one, family, and that's Jesus Christ. So we only operate in part. And as the scripture says, when perfect comes, we will no longer need the gifts of the spirit. And then Paul goes on and he's given a, compar a, a comparison when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish things away. So see, when perfect comes, we're, not, we're no longer going to need that, those things. That's what he's trying to get across. For now we see in a mirror because the only thing, we're only seeing partial of the glory of the, of the gifts. We're only seeing partial of all that. We're only seeing partial of his love. Imagine that. When you're up here, oh, and he's just cleansing you and just pushing his love on you, on you. Imagine that. You're only getting partial of his love. Amen. So all these things, all these things will pass away, the Bible says. He's, and when I become a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Paul is giving a, compa a comparison to what it's going to be like when perfect comes, family. We're going to see perfect face to face. And your faith will be your eyes. You will no longer need your faith. You will no longer be 
You will no longer need spiritual gifts. You will no longer need anything. All your questions will be answered when you see Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Father. You're not going to need that. Oh, I'm going to ask God this when I know everything is going to be answered. Because right now we st we're still in this human suit. So we only see partially. Amen. So now in part, then I shall see fully. When perfect comes. And, he, and even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. Let's go to uh, chapter, ver uh, chapter 14, verse 1 really quick, please. Before we, before we close up. Thank you, Father. Man. Thank you, Lord. So what is he saying? Let me go. Let me check this out really quick. He says, so now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these is love. He says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Pursue love, family. That should have been part of chapter, uh, verse 13 in chapter 13, if you ask me. But pursue love. That's what, he's, that's what uh, Paul's trying to tell him. So everything we do, if it's not in love, whether it's hospitality, whether it's hospitality, and I want, I want us to get this really quick, please, because it's not beating on you, it's none of that, it's to, it's to make you well, it's to make you whole, amen? Whatever you do, whether it's ushering, whether it's the sound booth, whether it's the media, whether it's hospitality, whether it's armor bearing, whatever it is, it has to be done in love. It has to be because lives ain't going to change. And it's no longer about you, Mr. Ray, man. It's not. It's no longer about you, Ryan. It's no longer about you, Arlena. It's about baby Kayla. It's about the next generation. It's no longer about us. See, where we stop in this spiritual, in this kingdom atmosphere, wherever we stop at, wherever we plateau, that's going to be my, my little Thomas, my Ivan. That's going to be their ground. They're going to step on my ceiling. That's what they're going to do. So I want to, I want to, oh man, I just want to impart into you guys the importance of love. The love that is self-giving, the love that dies to self, the love that does not want its own way, that is not prideful, that doesn't boast, that doesn't keep record of wrongs no matter how many times that sister didn't say hi to you or whatever, does not keep record of wrongs. No, no. What are we looking like to the world? How are we behaving? Like Paul said in chapter 13, we're like babies. No, it's time. It's time for us to grow up, family. And um, yeah, I just want to thank you for your time. And I pray and I believe I believe that you gain you got something from this word because the words, the Lord's word goes forth and it accomplishes all that it has set out to do. And I believe it and I declare it in Jesus name. Yes. So. Thank you, Father. So before we, before we end in prayer, I just want to ask, if anybody in here, because family, I know it's Christmas time and New Year's is coming. and Oh, my New Year's resolution and all this stuff and all that stuff. No. Why wait for tomorrow what you can do today? Amen. So I just, if anybody in here knows in their heart that they have been struggling or they have not been operating in love, uh, a love and and we all miss it we all miss it but if we want to go forward in the new things of God if we want God to like sister Olivia said father we want you to manifest here if we want to do that we have to clean our hearts we have to get clean so if you've been dealing with that I just want you to stand up and I'm going to pray for you right now as we pray out and if not the Lord knows and, it, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody we're not trying to embarrass nobody but this is just for you to For you, it's for us, family. We're a home. We, we need to get well. It's not to embarrass nobody, okay? So, Father, I just thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that you've allowed me, Father God, to speak forth your word that you've deposited in my heart, Father. And first and foremost, Father, I stand for myself for missing the mark, Father, of loving those at, uh, the way you have called me to love them, Father, the way you love them, the way you see them, Father. 
So I just lift up my brothers and sisters right now. Anybody, Father, that has stood up, Father God, and those who are standing up in their hearts, Father God, you know their hearts, Father. I pray that you would minister to them tonight on their drive home, Father. You would give them visions. You would give them dreams of those things, Father, that you have called them to do, Father God, that they would lay down their lives for one another, Father God, and that you would bless them, Father, that you would bless them, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing at Turning Point Fellowship. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Father. We're growing, Father God, and we're going in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Father God. We bless you, Father. I pray no accidents, no breakdowns, Father. Just a safe trip to and from this place, Father God. And even though we depart from one another, Father, we never depart from your presence, Lord. And we thank you for that. So we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. And the church and I said, amen, 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 and amen. Hey, real quick, I just want to acknowledge Pastor Andre and Cassandra Jones, the first lady. We just want to welcome you guys. They're pastors, amen. We want to welcome you guys. Um, And yeah, you're dismissed. Thank you very much.